The ancient Greek word pharmakon can be translated as drug, which means both remedy and poison. Russian geographers understand landscape as a naturally interconnected grouping of inorganic and organic features, in which change occurring in one leads to change in all others. It's an ecological way of thinking on how the soil, the crust, and the rock sense through the psychogeophysical lens. This lens reveals the material logistics that outlives the urban human lifespan. Pharmacon, as a mutual poison and remedy, could only be perceived in the landscape through this lens. The current territorial expression of poison in Russia is what geographer Vladimir Kagansky coined as the inner periphery. Different from the remote periphery, where the territories have never been developed, the inner periphery consists of once developed, now declined territories planned by the USSR. Only wildlife thrives in the land of infrastructural, ecological, and demographical decay. Monotowns lost their value for technological instrumentalism. Overgrown, uncirculated roads, abandoned military bunkers, depopulated villages, pipelines that transport nothing but rust. The inner periphery was a landscape where political and economic changes lead to change in all other aspects. Nowadays, its ungovernability cancels this dynamic. The developed, urbanized Western Europe already owes Russia's inner periphery for the contribution of oxygen and CO2 digestion. This is the geopolitics of geochemistry, demonstrated by the circulation between so-called natural and so-called technological or artificial systems. These are the conditions for a pharmacon landscape to emerge. Inherited from the Soviet Union, satellite Russian cities are organized around critical natural resources. Each region of Russia is a miniature copy of the country, reproducing centers and hinterlands. The cartography of the inner periphery demonstrate an enclosed network of multi-centered territories containing externalities, waste, animals, factories, the poor and the old ones. Largely unvisitable, its popular perception was made through cartoids, cultural representation rather than scientific documentations. Based on the physical experience of landscape explorers, Kagansky's model is primarily a cartoid, a metageographical interpretation, a diagram map that describes the composition of the inner peripheries. It's a totality of ungovernable, administratively separate parts of the overwhelming majority of Russian regions, all left dilapidated. They are mapped as the dislocated, and the disconnected. They are the bare corners at the end of the roads. A crisis always results in an increase in territorial unevenness and polarization. These are the cadavers of Soviet-planned monotowns. 
As direct investment decreases, so does population and municipal incomes necessary. A pharmacon, rather than reclaiming this decaying governance for resettling its former rationale, aims for repurposing the landscape itself. Through the lens of psychogeophysics, we can constitute a geochemical record of our meditated, technical quotidian. Follow the poison and you'll find the inner periphery. Waste, the ultimate externality, is excluded from the centers. Inside the landfills, the process of decomposition is expected to take place for an indefinite period of time. Apart from the material solid waste, the temporality of both nuclear waste and the rising CO2 emission also operates on geological scales which is beyond human beings' lifespan. Making use of the existing waste footprints could lead to the revelation of the industrial inner periphery to come. But what do we do with the current, urgent ones? In the pharmacon landscape, deliberate poisoning equals accelerated remediation. The ambivalent coexistence of remedy and poison must become codependency. They could be the indicators that reveal the deep time material logistics of the pharmacon landscape. With the social and technological infrastructure to offer, it will be dedicated to ecological services fulfillment, converging in waste management, infrastructural repurposing, rewilding, as well as human exclusion for co-amalgamation. Russia will no longer be an ecological donor that preserves its land by doing nothing, but the leading player in the carbon-negative economy that powers the transnational ecological reserves. Pharmacon landscape is a model of intense territorial intervention for climate change mitigation. One type of specialized pharmacon landscape lies in the Industrial and Military Complex, or IMC. It is the world's largest consolidated land user of about one-tenth of the country's territory behind the barbed wires of forbidden zones. No other player could have access to this amount of satellite data and sensing technologies that are already in use for designing the country's borders. Russian territory is so vast that sometimes monitoring landscape dynamics can be only done from space. The geopolitics that shape the enormous land owned by the IMC has created unplanned geographical zones with a set of advantages of performing the remediated cycle for pharmacon landscape to come. The presence of the military force could reactivate the missing sensing layer of satellite service, which could provide technological prevention of logging or non-human disasters, such as anti-cyclones or droughts. Planes and drones could be repurposed for weather modification to keep the boreal forest cold in winter. Biochar is the new black earth for the reserves. Implementing carbon capturing synthetic trees could also utilize the curatorial potential of the remediating process. Military that used to troll inside the forest 
patrol on the sensing layer of the forest, monitoring the ecological reserves behind the barbed wire, guarding the most important link of the planet's circulation of carbon dioxide and oxygen. The borders of the enclaves are new frontiers of the synthetic green corridor. A military-managed Pharmacon landscape is one possible initiative that will turn Russia from a passive air waste sucker into an active player in the ecological economy. Russia is the park, involuntary in the past, deliberate in the future. It is the geo-design park of Pharmacon landscape. The park is an artificial enclosure of the exterior. Here, we will learn from the externalities. If the growth has resulted in a rising atmospheric concentration in the CO2, the reverse of growth is not degrowth, but carbon-negative growth. Capturing, injecting, and remineralizing soil with CO2 is a deliberate poisoning of the geological layer of Pharmacon landscape. Carbon capture and storage, CCS, is not just a singular technology, but rather a practice that combines several verbs, capture, transport, store, monitor. Decommissioned oil and gas pipelines in the inner periphery could be repurposed for CO2 transportation. Abandoned mines and reservoirs could be facilitated into carbon sinks. While the rest of the world is hesitant to invest in the infrastructure needed for a carbon-negative economy, Russia has a set of advantages, as infrastructural repurposing meets waste in its very site through direct air capture. This is the remediated inner periphery, reviving the formerly planned fields of infrastructures, switches, and gateways in motion towards a carbon-negative pharmacon landscape. The opportunities this model offers for its own repurposing, its singular feature could become the key factors for climate change mitigation. As a territorial-based model, the traces of Pharmacon landscape to come can also be identified beyond Russian borders. It could serve as a geo-design initiative that reveals interconnecting geos geophysics, psychogeophysics, geochemistry, and geopolitics. There is no singular panacea, but a multiplicity of amalgamations. Again, by burying wasting them, we could save the rainforest from the ravages of man.